Today's video is all about the seven pieces which you will never regret buying or having in your closet. So these are the items which I feel can really help you to elevate your own sense of personal style and they're the pieces which you may want to consider spending a little bit more money on and also paying close attention to the quality and craftsmanship of these items. Today's video is not solely restricted to clothing either. There is going to be a variety of things which you will never regret buying. And these are pieces which can also span across multiple seasons. So you can get use out of these all throughout the year. So in today's video, we'll have a look at the seven items you will never regret buying. We'll have a look at the what and also the why. And I'll share some tips and tricks as well as some visual examples. I've made many mistakes over the years when it comes to trying to build up and curate a wardrobe which I love and also develop for my own sense of personal style. So some of the tips that I'm sharing with you today are based on the lessons that I have learned over the years um, and I really hope that you find today's video useful and inspiring. We'll get started with item number one which you will never regret buying and that is a really good quality coat. So when we're looking at really good quality coats, what I mean by this is a coat which is generally made of natural fibres such as wool or cashmere. Now delving into why it's really important to purchase a good quality coat made of natural fibres, the first reason is that natural fibres are inherently going to keep you a lot warmer compared to synthetic materials. Natural fibres such as wool or cashmere tend to retain your body heat a lot longer and conversely they will also keep you cool so you don't tend to sweat as much when you're wearing fibres such as wool or cashmere as what you would if you were wearing synthetic fibres such as polyester. Picking up a really beautiful quality coat in a wool, cashmere or natural fibre blend is also going to wear a lot better. So coats are one of the items that are definitely an investment piece for many of us when it comes to our wardrobes and we do want to purchase a coat in mind for it lasting across many years. So purchasing one that's made from a really good quality material is just going to tend to wear a lot better over the years. Another tip when it comes to purchasing a really good quality coat is to consider if you are going to be using public transport a lot, then getting a coat in a darker colour such as one in black, navy or even burgundy might be a really good idea. The darker coloured coats tend to hide stains a lot better than what the lighter coloured coats do. So they probably won't require dry cleaning as much as what a cream or beige coloured coat would. And lastly, one of the most important reasons to invest in a beautiful quality coat is because often it's the first and only part of your outfit that other people will see. So having just a luxurious winter coat on can really elevate your style and uplift your overall look. So some of my tips when it comes to choosing a really good quality coat is to consider what design details you feel will work for you, your personal style and your lifestyle as well. So keeping an eye out for things such as pockets and also waist ties are a really good idea. You also want to consider the um, collar style or the neckline. So you might like something which is a little bit open. And conversely, you might like something which has more of a high neckline so you can really cover your neck and perhaps not need to wear a scarf. I feel like a lot of people suggest to invest in neutral colours when it comes to coats. That's definitely a rule that I personally follow. However, don't be afraid to incorporate colour into your coat wardrobe if you really love a pop of brightness. So colours such as red, royal blue, forest green, burgundy, even a mustard yellow are really popular and they do tend to come around season after season and it can be a really lovely way to inject a bit of fun into your winter wardrobe. Another tip is to always try and store your coats, if possible, in a coat or suit bag like this one. This is just going to mean that when they're hanging in your wardrobe for literally half the year not being used, that they are going to be protected. There's still going to be a little bit of ventilation going through the coat or suit bag, um, but they're not going to be prone to any you know mothballs or bugs that you might have flying around and they're just going to be protected from fabrics from your other clothing as well. And the last tip when it comes to coats is to always make sure you get them dry cleaned. 
So I will usually get my coats dry cleaned a minimum of twice a year. So I'll usually have it dry cleaned during the middle of the winter season and also at the end of the season. And I think making sure that you get your coats dry cleaned at the end of winter is really important because when you pack them away, you want to ensure that they're perfectly clean and that they have no stains. If you don't have your coats clean and then you pack them away, those stains can really set in and damage the fabric and they can be a lot harder to get out when you pull them out at, during the next year for winter. So the second item which you will never regret purchasing and spending a little bit more money on is well-fitting lingerie. So what I mean by this is lingerie which is well-fitting for your body as it is currently. It's also practical for your lifestyle, so it functions perfectly well, and it's also suited to your clothing needs as well. So looking at the reasons why well-fitting lingerie is something you will never regret in buying, I think the most important point to consider, and this is something that I also don't see a lot of people discussing as much as what I think we should be, is because it forms the very structure and basis of any outfit we as women could wear. So if we don't have well-fitting lingerie that's suited for our current body shape and also fit for purpose for the specific activity that you're going to and the outfit that you're wearing, then it really doesn't matter how nice or expensive looking your clothes look because if the actual foundation or structure of your body underneath your clothes is ill-proportioned, then any outfit you wear is simply not going to look very good at all. The next reason why this category is so important is because as women, most of us will need a range and a variety of different fitting bras and underwear for our lifestyle. So we're obviously going to need a comfortable t-shirt bra like this one, but then there's also going to be times when we're going to need different bras like a strapless one or one that you can actually convert the straps to a halter neck or maybe a racer back style as well. So having a convertible bra and then also a really good quality everyday bra as well, like this one, like a t-shirt bra, are things that we're going to need. Then we're also probably going to want to have some more special sets, especially if you're like me and you do love lingerie. So items that have, you know, little sort of lace details or sparkles and also, um, you know, little bows or embellishments are really lovely to have. So we're often going to also need to have sports bras as well. Um, and, you know, there's such a variety when it comes to the underwire. So having the wire-free ones or the underwire ones, it's all going to depend upon your personal preference. But we will definitely need a range and a variety of bras and underwear. The third reason why this category is so important is because it actually needs to suit our closet and our lifestyle. So you may not be someone who really likes this sort of dainty or um, intricate pieces like this one. This has got some sparkles, lace and a bow on it. You might be someone instead who prefers comfort over the design. And if you are anything like me and you do love to wear light colored or white tops or t-shirts, then making sure that you have a simple beige t-shirt bra like this one is definitely going to be a must have for your lifestyle. So considering your personal style, what you like to wear and the design and color of your clothes, is going to ensure that any lingerie you purchase is fit and functional for your lifestyle. So my tips when it comes to incorporating well-fitting lingerie into your life and wardrobe is to, as a minimum, at least once a year, go through your lingerie and actually do a review of anything that is not fitting you properly anymore, anything that might be stretched out or discolored or just anything which just doesn't make you feel lovely when you wear it. I actually did this for myself at the start of the year and I did pick up a couple of replacement sets and I purchased these from two French lingerie brands which I've always wanted to try and they really have been lovely. So I'll just share some details with you. The first set I got was a sort of really dusty, rosy, beigey pink colour here 
and I got the matching bottoms as well. So this is just a really great sort of everyday bra and this one also came in a black and a white as well. And this is from the French lingerie brand called Simone Perel. They're renowned especially for their bras. They're really, I guess, um, well regarded in the lingerie industry for making amazing bras for women. So the second one which I picked up is from a French brand called Chantel. And this is a really pretty one this was also available in different colors so it's just a really lovely lace detail there we've got their signature C with the bow and I also got the bottoms as well so these just really lovely to have I think that just freshening up your wondering underwear at least once a year is really important. Another tip which I'd like to share is that it's important to always make sure that you are checking that your cup size and the size of your bra is still fit for the current size that you have because as women after we give birth or after we might lose weight or gain weight or we all go through hormonal changes as well um, you know our bodies can change and it can be very easy to assume that you are a certain cup or bra size in one brand it might be different across different brands as well so a really good example is I actually got a 8D in the Simone Perel um, and then in the Chantel I ended up getting a 10C um, but I spent quite a bit of time in the change rooms and making sure that I was getting the fit right. So you just want to make sure that you are having the middle bit resting flat against your chest and then making sure that the underwire on the outer edge is holding you in properly. When you bend over, you want to make sure that there's not a big gap between the cup and your chest. And conversely, you also want to make sure that you're not spilling out of the cup either. So getting to know your body and making sure that you get fitted if possible, or at least know how to fit yourself is really important when it comes to purchasing well-fitting lingerie. So the third item which you will never regret buying is a really good quality handbag. And what do I mean by this? At least one good quality handbag which is functional and fit for your lifestyle is really important. And what do I mean by this? We want to have a look at the keywords here which are quality, functional and lifestyle. So breaking down good quality Ideally made of leather if possible um, because that's going to wear very well over the years. It's something that you will be able to clean with leather cleaner and condition as well. And it's also going to last you a lot longer compared to a cheaper synthetic material. When we talk about good quality as well, we also need to consider craftsmanship. So by that I mean paying attention to things such as the stitching on a handbag. So if you've got any stitches that have popped or they aren't aligned properly, then that's probably a warning sign that your handbag is not really good quality. And also taking into consideration any zips. So you might have an internal zip inside a bag and if it's something that gets stuck really easily or the zip is really hard to open, then that can generally be a sign of poor quality craftsmanship. When we consider whether a bag is functional or not, we need to look at things such as the style of the handbag. So is it a tote bag? Is it a crossbody bag, a shoulder bag, a top handle bag, a clutch? You guys sort of get the idea. You wanna pay attention to the actual style of the bag. Another consideration is also the size. So there's a huge variety of sizes out there from nano, small, medium, large, jumbo, maxi, and that's another key component you're going to need to consider when you're looking at the function of a handbag. Both of these factors are going to influence how often you use a handbag and how functional it is for you. So, you know, considering whether it's something that you can use every day or is it more of an evening or event style or seasonal style bag purchase. So size and style are really two important factors when it comes to function. And the third factor when it comes to a handbag is lifestyle. So you wanna consider where you are at in your life now. If you're someone that's working in an office, then maybe taking a bag that is slightly larger than this one might be a really good consideration, particularly if you want to you know, carry any sort of, um, you know, you might have laptops or you might have, you know, a makeup or cosmetic 
bag that you also want to pop in your bag so maybe something like a tote or a larger style bag might be a little bit better conversely if you're going on holidays then a really open tote bag might not suit you very well you might want something which is a little bit smaller and can fit the essentials but is also a lot more secure so something with a zip or a bag which is really hard for any potential pickpockets to get into when you're not paying attention so my first tip when it comes to buying a handbag is to don't feel any peer pressure or social media pressure. So if you don't have the budget to purchase a luxury designer bag, um, but you do actually need a really good quality handbag, then consider brands that are non-luxury or non-designer. So one of the brands which I really love is Pollen Paris. They make amazing quality bags at really reasonable and affordable prices. I've had two bags from Pollen. The first one I had was the Pollen Numero Un in black. That was in the large size. And this is the second one that I've got. This is the same style, but it's in the nano size. Both of the bags that I've had from Pollen in terms of the craftsmanship is just absolutely amazing. The leather is, um, you know, it wears really, really well and they're also really practical. You can fit a lot inside their bags and they have a wide range of designs and colours. So you're sure to find something which will suit you, your lifestyle and your personal style. So looking at brands such as Pauline Paris is a great alternative if you're not interested or you don't have the earning capacity to start investing in a luxury designer handbag. The fourth piece which you will never regret purchasing is a lovely jacket or blazer. So if you really love jackets then considering purchasing a really lovely denim jacket or maybe something a little bit edgier like a leather jacket is a really good investment and conversely if you do prefer more of that sort of structured polished style then investing in a blazer can be a really worthwhile addition to your closet. So looking at the different styles of blazers such as really tailored fitted ones or maybe ones which are slightly more masculine or oversized in nature is something to consider. So why is a blazer or a really good quality jacket so important? I think these are the pieces which not only keep you warm by virtue of their form and function, but they're also items which can really drastically alter or elevate a very basic outfit. I've really noticed a huge difference in how polished and pulled together I feel now that I've started including these in my wardrobe. I really feel that the blazers particularly have that ability to add a lot of polish and elegance to an outfit. I could be wearing something as simple as a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and the minute that I pop one of these on over the top, I just feel so much more pulled together and elegant. Some of my tips for when it comes to jackets and blazers is to really get a sense of your own personal style before you go out and buy anything. So if you have more of, say, an edgier, more youthful look when it comes to your style, then picking up a leather jacket might make complete sense. And conversely, if you do have more of a sort of sophisticated or mature or classic sense of style, then incorporating a blazer might really serve you well for a lot of different outfits. If you prefer more of a relaxed style, then getting something which is slightly oversized or even just going a size up can really help you to create that sense of nonchalance when it comes to your blazers. So this is one I actually did size up in, and that was because I was looking for one which was a slightly a little bit more relaxed compared to the tailored other blazers which I have. And lastly, don't forget in the power of tailoring. So I have actually had to have these two blazers here professionally altered when it comes to the sleeve length. This just means that when I pop these on now, they look like they've been perfectly tailored and made specifically for me, my body height and my body shape. Um, so make sure that if you do find a blazer that you love, 
but the measurements of it seem to be slightly off. Don't forget that you can always get the sleeves altered. They can also, you know, alter the placement of the buttons as well and potentially bring the blazer in at the side if you need that done as well. The fifth item which you will never regret purchasing is a couple good quality items of jewellery. So this can be jewellery in silver, it can be jewellery in gold, platinum or even lovely pearl jewellery depending upon your personal taste. So looking at the reasons why, good quality gold, platinum, silver or pearl jewellery is inevitably going to last much longer compared to costume jewellery by virtue of the material composition. Jewellery is also a really personal way to express your sense of personal style. It instantly adds a point of interest and is something which often has a very personal meaning to us. I've been really fortunate in that ever since I was a young girl, my mother has always purchased some really lovely yellow gold or pearl jewellery for me. Some of the ones which I really love is this strand of pearls. So I think I got this for my 18th birthday and then I was also given this really lovely yellow gold and diamond heart bracelet as well. Some of my tips when it comes to jewellery is to really consider whether you prefer dainty pieces such as this one here or more statement pieces such as this one here. Um, if you are going for a sophisticated look then generally the daintier pieces of jewellery are going to serve you well in that regard. My second tip is try not to be influenced by the influencers. So I think for me, a really good example is I've noticed over the last few years that that sort of chunky gold or silver chain jewellery is really in fashion at the moment. Um, and just because everyone is wearing a certain style of a necklace doesn't mean that you have to, especially if it's not going to be suited to your personal style. For me, I personally prefer the dainty pieces and also the pearl jewellery as well. The only statement piece I have is this one here, which is my return to Tiffany heart toggle necklace. But generally, I do prefer more of the feminine sophisticated pieces and I am very good in not being sort of swayed by what everyone else is sort of wearing at the moment because I know my own personal style and the things that I love. My last tip when it comes to jewellery is to actually educate yourself when it comes to the materials. So get to know, um, you know, the different types of gold and materials that are out there and available. I think another good thing to consider is that a lot of the really luxury and well-known jewellery brands, think of, you know, ones such as Cartier, they will often have an immense markup on a lot of their jewellery items. So think of something like the Cartier Love Bangle, the you know amount of gold that you're getting in that, you're paying a lot more for the brand name compared to a very similar type of bracelet with the same gold composition and weight that you could get at a lesser known jeweler. jeweler. So you're paying a lot more for the markup in the luxury name. Um, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you sort of go for and I do love the idea of the Cartier love bracelet as well but I do think it is important to educate yourself um, so you know that um, you know are you getting good value for money or could you get better value for money elsewhere. So the sixth category which you will never regret buying is knitwear which is made of really comfortable high quality fabric. So why is this? There is such a range of knitwear out there available and when it comes to knitwear fabrics they're not all made equal especially when it comes to the comfort factor and wearability. So I think for me, wool and cashmere knitwear are probably my top two suggestions because they are really natural materials and this means that they will keep you warm without causing you to actually sweat. And conversely, if it is a little bit warm, if there's a bit of sunshine out there and you're wearing a wool or cashmere top, it's also going to keep you cool compared to wearing a synthetic material. So wool and cashmere really are my top two picks. They're the materials which I'm really focusing on incorporating into my wardrobe when it comes to knitwear. Wool and cashmere also feel really lovely against the skin as well. This is something that's really important, particularly if you're like me and you have quite sensitive skin, then making sure that you have knitwear which is preferably made of natural fibres is going to be really important. 
just to make sure that you're not getting that sort of sensitivity or itchiness anywhere on your body. Another reason why knitwear made of really good quality natural fibres is so important is when it comes to wearability. So for me, as much as I love the look and the feel of fibres such as Angora and Mohair, I find that these items can be really frustrating to wear. Um, so I've had knitwear items generally with Mohair, which they shed their fibres so easily and I'll end up having fibres all over my jeans or my trousers. Maybe, you know, I remember sitting in the office and my chair had all the fibres stuck on the back of it and then sometimes I'll just get this random fibre that ends up sticking to my face and then I'm trying to get it off. So just thinking of the, the wearability factor is really important. You don't want to have to carry around a lint brush all day um, just to get those shedded fibers off the rest of your outfit so that's another reason why i think fibers such as wool and cashmere are far superior to mohair or angora so some of my tips for when it comes to knitwear is to consider including at least some neutral colors i definitely love a pop of color especially pink and red however i found that the versatility of my wardrobe has dramatically increased especially with my knitwear after having invested in some neutral colorways so when we're thinking of neutral colors we're often thinking of pieces with cream navy black gray also brown such as camels and even beige as well. Another tip with knitwear is don't just look at roll necks like these ones. Also consider including a few crew neck knitwear pieces. These are really handy and also super versatile because you can actually layer a collared shirt or a lovely blouse on underneath and you can have that collar just popping out and over the cuffs as well. It can just be an additional sort of layering item and conversely you can also wear it on its own without anything laid underneath. So crew neck knits are another wonderful option to consider when it comes to knitwear for your wardrobe. And the seventh item which you will never regret purchasing is comfortable footwear. So this is actually something which is a very important lesson for me personally. It took me many years to appreciate the importance of good quality, well-fitting, comfortable footwear. Um, but it was a lesson that I'll never forget. So we'll look at what I actually mean by this. So I mean a variety of comfortable footwear which is fit for your lifestyle. So why is this so important? Well, I think number one, our feet literally carry us through every day. The whole pressure of our body ends at where our feet are. Um, it's really important that we take care of our feet. And if we don't choose the footwear in the right size for our foot size, if we don't choose footwear which is comfortable, then we can also potentially damage our feet quite severely as well and end up needing an operation. So because I have chosen quite, um, you know, poorly fitting or even poorly made footwear in the past, I'm pretty sure that's contributed to me having a bunion on my right foot. I'm very particular now when it comes to the footwear that I wear. There is a focus now more on comfort over style. As much as I love a pair of stilettos, um, over the last couple of years, I definitely have been shifting more towards flats, especially loafers or mules like these ones. Um, and just making sure that I am choosing shoes that are made of really beautiful, well-constructed leather is really important as well for me. Another reason why choosing really comfortable and good quality footwear is so important and why it's something you will never regret is because shoes can literally make or break an outfit. For me, footwear is actually really similar to lingerie in that it doesn't really matter how expensive your clothes are or how nice or how good quality they are. If you don't have a really, um, you know, comfortable and appropriate choice of footwear on then your whole outfit is just um, going to look a little bit off and it doesn't really matter what clothes you're wearing shoes are just so important shoes can really uplift a very basic outfit as well so for example i could put these slingbacks on and i could be wearing a simple pair of jeans and a t-shirt and these shoes are just going to uplift the entire look 
a lot better than compared to if I was wearing just a regular pair of sneakers or trainers. Another reason of why this is such an important category is that similar to lingerie again, we're going to need a wide variety of footwear for our lifestyles as well. So, you know, you've got to think about things like going to the office, being on the weekend, going out for events, or just even being active. There's such a range of footwear which we will need. And this is something that I've been working on a lot over the last three years, is to actually expand the variety of footwear that I have. I used to only have, you know, a lot of stiletto heels for the office. I had one pair of sneakers. I had some really cheap ballet flats. Um, and I think I have a pair of like platform ankle boots that I hardly wore because I tripped over in them once. So I really have been focusing on footwear a lot over the last few years and it definitely has uplifted I guess how sort of stylish and confident I feel overall when it comes to my outfits and also how comfortable I feel in terms of my feet as well. The two particular shoe styles that I've really begun to focus on and include in my shoe wardrobe are loafers and these are really great because they sort of provide that really chic, elegant, polished and almost masculine effect to any outfit. These are also the most comfortable type of shoe that I've ever owned. Another shoe style I've been including is block heels. So these I find are just so much more comfortable compared to a pair of thin stiletto heels. As much as I love stiletto heels and I'll always have a pair, um, I really feel like block heels just provide that little bit more stability um, and are a lot more comfortable as well. So my tips for when it comes to footwear is to actually consider your lifestyle and the type of footwear that you need. So if you're not working in an office five days a week, then you might not need as many pairs of shoes um, for office wear. And if you have a very active lifestyle, then sneakers or trainers might be something which are going to get um, a lot more use for you compared to say a pair of block heels and I think it's also important to make sure you do have that variety when it comes to footwear so ideally you'd want to have at least one pair of sneakers one pair of flats and that could be a pair of loafers or ballet flats heels so you could consider a stiletto heel block heels barely their strappy sandals mules or even kitten heels Boots for winter, particularly if you live in a really cold climate, then this is going to be a key consideration. So it's such a variety out there, including ankle boots, knee length boots, over the knee boots, flat boots, mid heel or high heels with a stiletto or a block heel, and then also footwear for summer as well. So looking at things like leather sandals, rubber flip flops, and also espadrilles as well. Just making sure you've got at least one shoe from each of these categories, I think is going to ensure that you're set up for any season throughout the year and any type of event um, or purpose that you might have during your life. Today we've gone over the seven things which you will never regret buying. These are the items which I really feel it's worth spending a little bit more money on because they're the items that you're really going to find do double duty when it comes to practicality, style and comfort for your wardrobe. Obviously the items I've shown you today are all suited to my personal style and it's going to be different for everyone who's watching out there but I really hope that you have found today's video inspiring and useful. If you did enjoy it then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that lets me know that you liked it and if you are new here and you'd like to see more content like this from me in the future then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also turn the notification bell on that way every time I upload a new video here on YouTube you'll get a notification that a new video is published. Thank you guys so much for watching and returning. I hope you're all well and enjoying your weekend and I'll see you next Sunday with a brand new video. Bye!